so quick update. Um, so I posted a really long video yesterday uh, about uh, just glass, my glass blowing in general. And uh, this morning, whenever you come out uh, in the morning and open your kiln, it's it's like uh, it's kind of like Christmas morning. Some days everything is awesome, and then other days you have stuff that's popped or blown up or didn't turn out exactly how you wanted it to. And we've got a couple of those issues going on today. So let's take a look at the kiln here, which I secretly already have, Magic of, Magic of Television. And we can take a look at the pieces that I polished yesterday. So we got this, this one here. I'm gonna do a couple of these. So this was the one experimental piece that I did. Uh, I'm looking at my monitor here. The monitor should be over here. Um, and it came out perfectly. Yep. So it came out exactly as intended. Nice, beautiful, soft, flame polished lip, just like you would see at a store when you buy a glass. The other thing is, this is the one where I burnt the goo out of the inside. I, I, whatever was inside of this glass, which, I mean, gross for a second, it's uh, condensate inside the glass. And then when you heat it up, it kind of, I don't know, it cooks in, but it doesn't want to come out. I can tell you that much. Um, that one came out great. Uh, this one came out okay. Not, it came out sellable. So there's that. Um, you never, never point out your flaws. Uh, spring has sprung in Philadelphia, and my nose is running. Um, this is the other, uh, this is another one. And then these are exactly what I was shooting for, which is fantastic. Now, I did, all right, so let's pull the rest of these out, and then I'll talk about my failures. So when you take them out of the kiln, the first thing you want to do is inspect them for cracks um, because glass does crack. And I actually do have a cracked one, but I already put it in the kiln and I forgot. So I don't know if it's going to show up on my crappy GoPro here, but you can see the chamfer that I put in these. And then I polished the lip so it gets rid of the grinder marks. And this one, not so much. The chamfer wasn't as big on that one as it is on this one. But you can see there's a little marble in the bottom of all these. This one's a flower. It's an electric blue flower. These all are going to go up and get packed for the show, which is April 21st. Uh, this is not my kiln, obviously. This is my partner's kiln. One of these days, I'll splurge and buy myself a guillotine door kiln. And again, no cracks. No funkiness inside. That one's got a little bit of funkiness around the bottom there, but I don't, I don't think it'll show up. Again, now this one here in particular is, uh, there's another one with a nice chamfered edge. Nobody will ever notice it except me. Um, now this is part of a set of the Sea Anemone style. Um, this one has a little bit of a wobbly base. Um, but I think it, it'll be okay. It doesn't, it does stable out once you set it down. It, it, it does rock a little, but it set, settles straight out. So I'm not worried about it. Um, I mean, not for nothing. I don't expect anybody to ever actually drink out of these. Um, but you know, it's getting this base perfectly 100% dead flat with the tools that I'm using right now are not going to work. I did break one yesterday, got caught, if you watched my other video, it got caught on the wheel and flung off into the, the brick wall, but and sadly that one didn't survive. Um, it hit perfectly right on the edge. And then here's two more that persimmonin, or persimmon, persimmonin, persimmonin, um, I kind of like it, but I don't think I'm going to use it anymore for this sea anemone style. Um, amber purple works out a little bit better because it gives it a, it's hard to describe it. It looks more realistic with the amber purple. Um, the little fishies kind of get lost in these, but they're pretty cool looking. And I'm going to get more persimmon. Yeah, persimmon, persimmon, I don't know how you say it. 
Um, it's my Philly accent. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, that's it. That's all that was in there. Now, let's talk about the, the pieces that I made yesterday on camera. Um, so this is the one in the very beginning of the first, in the, the very beginning of the video where, um, my camera dies and I don't get to, to show exactly what happens. So the original piece here was about this long and it cracked at the punt and ran down the piece. So I was able to save it. Um, and quite frankly, now take, understand that this is going to get ground off, but this is exactly what I was looking for. This is the exact size I was looking for. I like the shape. I like the size. And then what will happen is this is going to get cut. It's going to get cut right along the top here, and it'll give me a nice... Um, I'm shooting for three and a half inches, and it looks like I'm going to get about three inches out of this one. Yeah, at its lowest point where it can be cut, it'll be about three inches. And you can see it's all really lumpy. And that'll all go away. These are ones that I ground yesterday afternoon and that I have to flame polish still. Um, actually, this one was supposed to go in the kiln, but it didn't get put in the kiln. Um, I'm actually not going to flame polish this one then. Because, oh well. Um... They don't all need to be flame polished. I you can just take a little piece of sandpaper and just run it around the inside lip, and the it comes out just fine. You know, eighty five percent of the time. Now um, I'm not sure what I, I didn't review the second part of the video, which I will include in this video. Um, but these are the ones. These are all frit rolled, and again, this is all going to get cut off. So what I'll end up with is a um, about 65 millimeters. It's about two and a quarter inches OD, or about two and a half inches OD. And again, it's going to be uh, probably this one's about going to be about two and a half inches tall, which is too big for a shot glass, too small for a rocks glass, but just about the right size for a juice or whatever. Um, this one does have a little bit of a, uh, taper in. That's okay. This one is amber purple frit, which sadly didn't strike properly in the kiln. But again, this end's going to get cut off and it'll be flame polished. So this cup, this finished cup is going to be about this tall. Uh, and it's thick. These, these are, these are th 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 thick. Um, and this is actually exactly what I'm shooting for also. Perfect size, perfect height, nice and straight. It's got a little bit of a well in it. That's okay. This is These are hand-blown. These are handmade. These are one of a kind. So I've got this one, which will have to be ground and then flame polished. And then this is another one that really I'm really happy with. It's got a little bit of a doink in it right there. Uh, part, of the problem, part of the problem is this blue is really stiff. The colors, the glass, all move at a different rate. Um, so when you start putting color in stuff, it starts to get a little weird. But, again, it's a nice size, it's a nice size cup. You can put some ice in it, you can put your cocktail in it. Um, this is another one, again, perfect size, nice straight wall, because I didn't, I didn't mess with this. This is the 65 OD, which is what I wanted. I, I really like that, that OD. Pushing the limits of my equipment, I understand that, but... We're, we're getting there. Limit and, you know, pushing the limit of my equipment and my skill level. Now, this is one that I just had laying around. Uh, this was a failed piece. Um, so what I did, and it actually turned out really cool, is I actually, um, I just ground the bottom off on this one. But the effect is you can, it, it looks like it's sandblasted on the inside. And the reality is it's not. Um, the, the base is real thick. And it looks like it's sandblasted. Pretty cool. Um, that's about it. I think it, uh, that'll complete uh, this long series of videos. And then we'll get back to shooting some more videos later of other things. M mostly, I think what I'm going to do, the next video is going to be um, doing one of these glasses from start to finish. All right. Now, uh, 
I'm, I want to try to do this again, and hopefully, hopefully I can get what I need to get on video. Um, I, 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 the, the camera overheating is problematic. Um, I, it, it shut off halfway through the last time, and it broke, or the piece broke, which was so cool when it broke, because you got, you know, now you get to see me get mad. Um, and that was my fault. So breaking that piece was my fault. So we're going to light up again here. You'll notice I use a barbecue lighter. I do that for a couple reasons. One is um, I can't, I, I know where it is all the time. And I'm using a sparker lighter and not a, uh, uh, not a sparker, a uh, piezo lighter. and not a, uh, a spark lighter. Okay, so I have this piece here, and uh, I don't know if it's gonna show up, but this is out of round like crazy. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm, I'm gonna do something that's not really a good idea, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Um, I'm going to heat it up, and I'm gonna try to put a crank in it to get it so the hand, the piece that's in my right hand will spin nicely. The piece that's in my right hand now is junk, so I'm not worried about it. Now this piece is gonna fucking crack too because when I cut this, I didn't flame cut it. I uh, I scored it and heat struck it and it, it to crack it half. Because I can't hold a 65 millimeter piece of tubing um, straight. I just can't do it. I, just, I don't have the, the strength in my hands. So what I need to do now, uh, the crank worked, but my cut at the end here is really crooked. So I'm going to need to straighten that out so you get everything in, in order here. Uh, I'm not going to be using this whole piece of glass, trust me. <laughs> uh, about this much of it's going to go away, if not more. We'll see. Uh, you have to remember when you're closing a tube, you know, whatever, um, you know, a good inch and a half of that tube, if not two inches, is... Um, is going in the trash. Especially one this big. This is a big piece of tubing. Uh, interestingly enough, also, this, uh, uh, Darn it. I don't know what that was, but I think if it was over there, it was important. Oh, fudge. Oh, this one just went sideways on me. Well, I guess this is going to be a... Oh, no, I got something. Okay. Uh, I thought that was all my three mil that I just smashed. Apparently not. I'm going to take this piece of eight mil, and I'm going to force this to close. The tube on my left, in my right hand, is actually open. Uh, so what happens is um, the heat's actually running up that end of the tube, and I got to uh, kind of hold it. The tube in my right hand is absolutely getting hot, and I, I don't particularly care for that. Uh, nobody really wants to burn the hell out of themselves if they can avoid it. And we're going to throw all of this away. mill here get it warm
and I'm tilting the rod, I'm tilting the tube in my left hand downwards. So when I add this rod here, I'm getting it as close to the center line as possible. If it's crooked, everything will be crooked. We don't really want that. We kind of want everything to be as straight as you possibly can get it. All the time. That's why they use lathes. This thing is still really hot. And it's still really moving. For whatever reason, my Marver is sticky. Alright, now. I'm going to call it right there. This is gonna be a smaller piece than I tried to work the last time for a lot of reasons. The main reason being is it cracked. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna definitely use make a smaller piece here. My goal is actually um, sets of rocks glasses. Um, if I can get some four inch tall, give or take a little bit. Uh, rocks glasses. That's kind of what I'm shooting for with a relatively decent base. I can really kind of, it's really what I kind of want. But, you know, it is what it is. Whatever I can make work, work. Now I'm pulling on this thing pretty hard to try to speed this process up a little before my camera dies. Alright, now. Get that bugger. Now, I want that bugger out of there. Oh, I don't believe I did that. Okay. That cool down a little bit and hopefully this will snap off. Okay, good. Now, now I'm going to tear this open, this end open again. My rest just decided it wanted to fall down, which is not good. Sorry, we'll fix it in a second. All right. Ah, pretty good. Uh, I you want the rest? I want my rest a little higher than my torch, so I can push it down. Now I got a tube here, which of course I forgot to add the blow pipe to. Why would I think ahead? Oh, and that bastard's really hot, so, all right. Everything in front of my torch is ludicrously hot. I really shouldn't have all this stuff here, especially if I intend on touching it. All right, so. Now I'm marvering the end down. Paddling in down as close as I can get it.
So now I'm getting this as straight as I can. I want the left side where my blow tube is to be very straight. silver in with a reducing plane. I'm going to burn as much of that silver off of there as I can. Or burn it in at least. Alright, well, that is what it is. that much silver um, it has two effects one is uh, it can get milky and nasty um, and ugly but the other thing it does which is kind of cool is it'll put like speckles of silver on the piece when you get it real hot again and that melts in and creates like these really, really cool starburst kind of effect oh, okay. right. now now my gold Flame's really hot for fuming. It's actually probably way too hot, but... That's, uh, that's what we got. Careful with that. I don't want to lose another one. And... This is just clear again.
some blue over here. What do I want? Um, got this crazy blue. And I'm just going to try to drizzle this on. I'm going to fire it on over there on my bench. It'll go out in a second. Uh, doing this this way actually causes some problems. Um, I've got a really inconsistent application of material here. Look outside. I'm going to do something really dumb right now, but uh, I kind of want to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run all the way down to the end of this thing. Just like that, which is bad. I should not have done that. And you're going to see probably why in a minute. So I'm out of, I'm out of torch. Uh, that's it, ain't getting any hotter than it is right now. So now, I'm gonna melt these in. I'm gonna start down here, actually. And get it good and hot. This piece of glass is about three and a half inches, four inches in, in length, probably about six inches in length overall. Which quite frankly is about as much as I'm comfortable dealing with. The other piece was way, 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 way too big. and it bit me in the end.
Now, I'm gonna finish this one-handed. Well, I guess theoretically one-handed. All right, I'm gonna set that aside. I'm gonna grab oh, some leftover shit I had from the other one. And I'm just gonna put some dots in here. What I'm trying to do is to get the ball at the end to kind of even out. It's really hard for me to do because well, I don't have a whole lot of strength in my hand. And it's a little bit it's a little bit off axis. So